Hi, Faithful Caregiver. I'm going to be doing a pivot from what I normally do on practical dementia care because I want to share something with you from my heart. It has been a challenging week for me and I have been overwhelmed with some things and I know that you as a caregiver have those weeks also. I wasn't even going to publish a video because I just had so much going on and it's like the Lord just would not let me get away from the fact I needed to share some scripture with you that has helped me through my life, well specifically since 2008, and I hope it will help you also. Let me say up front, I know some of you aren't believers. I'd still love to have you join us for this session. If not, please come back to the channel because I will, of course, be continuing doing tips that you can use along your dementia care journey. Okay, let's get to this scripture. Isaiah 41.10, and y'all, I haven't even taken off my church clothes yet. I just needed to get this done, and so I just am who I am. Okay, first of all, I'm going to read Isaiah 41.10, then we'll break it down. Then we're going to come to some conclusions about how God shows his goodness, even during these times of taking care of our dementia loved ones. Isaiah 41.10, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will also help you, and I will also uphold you with my righteous right hand. Okay, let's break this down. First of all, the scripture says, do not fear. That's not a suggestion, y'all. <laughs> That's a commandment. That's not God saying, you don't have to fear if you don't want to. That is God saying, do not fear. So the first thing you need to do is pinpoint your fears. And to do that, one way I show my ladies to do it, or I suggest that they do it in our Ladies Connect group, is to close your eyes whenever you have a question that you don't know what something is that's bothering you or what you should do next in life. Close your eyes. Let it be silent. No talking, no TV, none of that going on. And just ask the Lord to show you. And I will tell you, 99.9% .9 of the time, he will show you immediately what it is that you need to do in your life or what it is you need to turn over to him, like turn it over again and again. If you're like me, I give it to God and I take it back, give it to God and take it back. We're not supposed to do that, so we're supposed to not fear. Let's pinpoint our fears. Do you know specifically what your fears are? Is it finances? Maybe you don't know where the next dollar is going to come from to pay for your mom's medication. Is it the fact that you don't have people helping you and your family should be helping you and you're frustrated because they won't do what they could do in order to help you? There are a lot of reasons that we can have fears. Maybe you even fear having the ability to take care of your dementia loved one. I know when I took my mom out of rehab, the doctor there didn't really think I could take care of her at home. And I didn't know if I could or not. They didn't give me any resources. They didn't give me any suggestions. I took her home and I just kind of went at it and learned as I go. Which is a reason that I'm doing this Dementia Care channel is because I want you to know some of the things I learned along the way to make it a little bit easier for you as you care for your loved one. But here's another thing that you might be fearful of. Isolation is horrible. I know when I went through cancer the first time, I was in an isolation room. Nobody could be in there with me or touch me because of the treatment that I had. And that's when God first really made this verse real in my life. And I laid there with the sun coming in the window all alone thinking no one can even touch me. And they had everything was wrapped in plastic so that nothing on me would get on anything. And I remember just letting that verse roll through my mind and I just put my right hand out and I laid it on the bed and I thought, the Lord's just sitting there and he's holding my hand. He was holding my hand and I felt so comforted knowing that the word of God is true. He can't lie. God is God. He doesn't even have the ability to lie. When he promised me he would hold me with his righteous right hand, which in Hebrew that means his faithful hand, he meant that he would do that, and he did that for me. So isolation might be one of your fears, but we don't need to fear isolation because he will literally be faithful to hold us with his faithful right hand. 
So now that you've got your fears down and you know what they are, why don't you have to fear? We were just talking about that because he's made some promises to us. He says, I'm your God. And who is God to you? When you keep breaking the verse down more, next, who is God to you even? Normally, I first of all think of he's my redeemer and he is my savior. That's normally what would come to our mind first of all. But who else is he to you? What is God to you in your life? He is also your strength, right? Because that's what that verse says. He tells you who he is to you. He says, I'm your strength. He says, I'll help you. And he promises that he'll hold you with his faithful right hand. These are promises from our Lord. A lot of times when I see in a verse a promise from God, I will write in the column in my Bible a P just right there beside of the verse so that I will know that that is a promise from God. And these promises are something that we can stake our life on because he is true and faithful. And if you've walked with him for any length of time, you know historically he has brought you through some trials. So if historically you can think back, what has he brought you through? And I can list you trial after trial after trial I've been through, I'm going through, or that my family is going through. And historically he has been with me. And I know in the future He's going to be with me too. So I don't want you to be anxious and overwhelmed because life might be tough today. So if we can just remember that he has all the ability that he needs and he's all powerful, whatever he promises, he will do for us. So I hope Isaiah 41.10 will be something that you keep in your mind this week. There's also a book that's called Draw the Circle. It's, the, it's a 40-day prayer challenge that our church has been going through together corporately. It's by Mark Batterson. This is a really good book, y'all. If you want it to pick it up on Amazon, pick it up on Amazon and read it. It's not a hard read, but he gives you some very specific ways to pray. And that's what I've been doing this week because, again, I've had specific things that I've had to make decisions over. And I want you to always remember that God is there for you and his goodness is that he will always be there for you. That's his goodness. His goodness is no matter if we feel like we cannot do the next day because it's too challenging. We cannot do the next mess that our loved ones make because I've just done it too many times and I don't have it in me. God's goodness is he's going to give you the strength to do it. We just have to depend on him moment to moment some days and trust that he's going to be the God that he says he is and that he always has been in our lives. I hope that these have been words of encouragement to you that you can hold close to you this week as you take care of your dementia loved one. God bless you. Thank you for taking care of your dementia loved one. Stay true. Bye.